Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the show. It's uh, great to be here with you. I am having so much fun with this podcast, and I just want to thank you for being here, for listening. I appreciate you all, and I trust that you're getting some really great things from our conversations week after week. I know I am. I'm learning a lot, too, as I um, work to create content and put together thoughts and ideas around different topics that we can get into and guests that we can have on the show. And um, it's really just such an honor to be here with you. And I'm glad that you're finding so much value. So if if you are, I'm going to ask you guys a big favor. If you can please rate the podcast, I'm sure you're following it. But if you're not following it, um, we would love for you to do that because it does help us create a a bigger audience and cast a bigger net. So follow the show on whatever podcast platform you listen to. And if you could also rate it and share it with your friends, that would be amazing. And that will help all of us. So thank you so much. And, you know, what I love about this podcast and what I love about who I believe we attract here on Monday Morning Mojo is that we're all not afraid to think big. And I think that we should embrace big and not be afraid of it because I think big just stands for greatness. And I think that's what can lead us to having some extraordinary results, extraordinary experiences. And I'm all about helping people to look at their life and encourage them to pursue a big life. I think that we have a great gift being able to experience life. And while we're on this planet for an undetermined amount of time, we want and should look at how we can create the biggest, best life for ourselves. And, you know, that's a personal journey. It is going to be different. You'll define your life differently than I will or someone else. And that's what makes it so extraordinary and so amazing. And I think that we should all feel, um, we should all feel really comfortable with the thought of, living a big life, because that just opens us up to so many possibilities. And when you're open to possibility, then you can accomplish amazing things. And I believe that achievement is something that we should all be looking at. And it's going to look, again, different for all of us. But if we're going to do something, can we do it well? And so I love to encourage all of the people that I work with and and our listeners here to really think about how abundance shows up in their life and how we can um, be really much more comfortable with being successful in whatever area of our life that is and not fearing the concept of big. Right. I think if we're going to fear anything, we should fear mediocrity because we should be fearful of our life or our time being wasted. And so I want to encourage you to live life to your fullest. Um, I want to encourage you to embrace all of the things that you could be experiencing. I think that when we work consciously to have a, a big life, then we're running toward the things that we want more of in our life and really pushing away anything that doesn't serve us. And and that's what I want to talk about today on this podcast episode is giving you the courage to really have a big life and to think different. And I know that that can be scary at times, but when we can think differently, when we can push past average and mediocrity, and we can really embrace more of our dreams, then we're going to live our life in really the most authentic way possible. And then that's when we get to experience amazing things. And so I'm going to uh, share a few concepts with you today. If you're not driving, I think this might be an episode where you want to jot a few things down. Uh, If you're driving, you'll have to tune in later so that we can, you know, make sure safety first. But let's jump into talking about what what it really means when we say we want to work to our full potential and identify our purpose. And I I know that this is something we've talked about a lot here on Mojo. And and if you're like me and you're focused on uh, personal development, this is something that comes up all the time. And It is also something that we can get a little lost in and something that can overwhelm us. And I think that 
what I'd like to do today is unpack this whole conversation around identifying your purpose and, and really look at it from a different perspective. Because to me, if you can get clearer about your purpose, then you will find that you will open up really, I think, possibilities for you to be blessed and to bless others. But it also comes with a little responsibility. And, and that might be the part that seems a little scary. So we'll look at all of that here together. And, you know, I think I think that the other thing that I would love for you to take away from, from this conversation today is that purpose can be fluid. Your purpose is something that it's not a rubber stamp that you were given at birth. I think that it can really change over time. I think that you and we should want to define it often. I think that our purpose um, is something that reflects about, it reflects who we are and who we are is always changing. And so you have the opportunity and the right to always stretch your purpose or your definition of that and, and look at where you are in your life and engage in the things that are more meaningful for you and, and move towards the things that motivate you rather than drain you. So if you take one thing away from today is the fact that your purpose is always evolving and you are too, and that's what's so exciting. And while our purpose can shape and define us, I think that, you know, we have to be willing to say that we are always going to be morphing into the best version of ourselves. And when it comes to defining your purpose, it's as simple as asking yourself the right questions. And that's really what is so vital to this whole journey of identifying your purpose and, and looking at what you want to achieve in life is just, what are you asking yourself? Are you asking yourself the right questions. And I think that that opens up the door to possibility. And I think that when it comes to asking yourself the right questions, the best questions are going to be very open-ended and thought-provoking. And that's sometimes what challenges us, right? Because we might hold ourselves back from really getting deep. And uh, sometimes it's easier when someone else asks us the question Yet, if you can ask yourself a question that really gets you thinking, then that's when the magic starts happening. And Gary Keller has a, a book that I would recommend for you today on this topic, and that's called The One Thing. And in his book, The One Thing, which I have here somewhere, in his book, The One Thing, uh, he he asks this question, and it's it's a question he refers to as the focus question or the focusing question. Gary Keller asks this question in the book, and he calls it the focusing question. And here it is. What's the one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary? You know, if we live our lives by this question, what possibilities could show up? If we could ask ourselves on a daily basis, right, how can I just stay on track, right? There's so many things happening and there's so many things that we want to accomplish and we can get lost in all of those things and we can start to wonder where our priorities lie. And I think that this question just brings it back to center, right? What's the one thing, not 72, <laughs> <laughs> not, not, you know, a, a, a list of things, but what's the one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary. So the focusing question provides us, I think, a glimpse into not just the big things we want to do, but sometimes it is the more important small answers that come up that lead us on the right path. And so I think that as we start to unpack this concept of, you know, understanding our purpose and creating vision in our lives, then we, we, when we ask ourselves, where should our attention go, then we can really get clear about the path. And so to me, this question brings it back to center. This question allows me to, I think, get super clear about what I might be wasting some time on and, and really puts, I guess what Gary talks about in the book too, is that first domino in place. 
And so when this focusing question guides us to break down what we need, then we can determine what has to happen first and how we can then move forward to accomplish bigger goals. And, and so when you put your, when you narrow your focus and really get clear about what that one thing is, so many other things sort of fall off, right? And we realize that there's this whole myriad of things that we could be putting our time and attention to, putting our emotions into, and they're really not as important as that one thing. Because when you really put your energy into that one thing, everything falls into place and other things just become unnecessary. And so when we apply the focusing question, I think it gives us direction, but it makes it simple. I think it creates some simplicity. And a lot of times people are not on track to achieve their goals because they're making it too complicated. So if you have a tendency to overcomplicate things, could that one question bring you back into focus? And, and I think that it's okay for us to look for ways to make our lives easier. I think that we need to find ways to be more efficient. I think there's an opportunity for us to, to ask if we're making the greatest impact that we can make on ourselves and others and allowing ourselves to cut away all of the distractions and just evaluate where our energy should be I think sets us on a, a path to higher, achieving higher results. And, and it just brings some synchronicity and flow into our lives. And I think that's when things become easier too. So um, I love that focus question. What is the one thing, let me read it for you again. What is the one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary? I don't know about you, but sometimes I can get really weighed down with all the things I need to do in a day or all the things I think I need to do in a day. And when I get clear and ask myself a question like that and really put my energy into that one thing, I feel that I am not only more productive, but I also feel that I really start to get into my strength zone and really start to make a difference in what I'm trying to accomplish and what I'm doing for other people around me. And, and that's when I really bring the value. I think when we spend our time and energy on a lot of this stuff, this 80% stuff that is, is really not utilizing our talent, our strengths, uh, it is not really allowing us to, to, to really work through our strength zone, then we're actually being of disservice and we're becoming, you know, more ineffective as time goes on. And so really bringing it back to understanding your purpose, if, if the greatest opportunity we have in life is to connect with our purpose, then the second opportunity is to get into the business of living it out. And so when we spend a lot of time and energy on, on anything else, we're basically just wasting our time. And I think that it's important for us to acknowledge that if we do want to live a big life, then our time is so valuable. And because the, the more energy and time I can put into creating this big life, the more great things I can create for myself and other people. And so in order to really do that, I think it, it's important that we just keep our mindset on the right thing. And, and listen, that's, that is a daily challenge for everyone. I know sometimes I, people will stop me and ask, you know, are you really that positive? And I, and I say, well, I, yes. And it's a choice and I work at it. You know, I think everyone has to acknowledge that we're all human and, and the human experience comes with a lot of different thoughts and feelings. And so it's not uncommon that any of us on this path to achieving big goals, to achieving a life full of purpose, can find ourselves sometimes doubting and even feeling stuck sometimes. I think that that's just part of the process. So we should talk about it and we should acknowledge it. So I think that um, when we find ourselves stuck, we have to ask ourselves again some questions. and when we get up in the morning, right, and we're getting dressed and we're heading out to work 
and you think about, you know, how much routine there is in your life, right? You can find yourself doing a lot of the same things in the same ways. And so we all have patterns and we all have, I guess, a cycle that we get comfortable with. And we have to acknowledge at times if that pattern or that cycle is creating some stagnant thinking too, right? So I, look, it might sound silly, but even just driving a different way to the office every day can can change you know, uh, the way that you're thinking. Sometimes we just find ourselves kind of in a pattern of thinking and a pattern of these habits. And so if we wanna live an extraordinary life, we have to shake it up sometimes. And so listen, if you find yourself ever in a mental rut, we have to be aware of that and shake that up too. And I think that um, our progress towards this journey of fulfilling our purpose, um, it, it would be, I'm pausing editing. I think the journey to finding our purpose at times is exciting and it's also challenging. And so we have to acknowledge that if we wanna live a big life and we wanna proclaim that we're here to achieve great results and experiences and make an impact in the world, then we have to be willing to let go of some of the familiar. We have to be willing to step out of our comfort zone. Um, we have to know that the person you are today has to grow and evolve on the journey of achievement, on the journey of fulfilling your purpose. And so we have to be willing to let go of some of the things that keep us in our comfort zone, right? And so as we do that, we have to acknowledge what are some of the habits and practices that we have, you know, that we're holding on to that maybe need to change. And taking the time to let go of some of the old ways of thinking, um, for us to examine our beliefs, for us to be willing to do things differently and learn new skills, right? All of that, I, I know when you are, when we're talking about it, when you're listening to this, you're, you're saying, well, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, it's, it's a simple concept enough, but it may not be easy, right? It's simple enough, but it may not be easy. So... I think that we have to look at um, what what are the ways that we can do that. And, and then it starts with knowing there are a lot of things that influence us on a daily basis, right? Many of those things are from our childhood, right? Many of those things are learned beliefs around the way our parents raised us and taught us. They come from culture, society, uh, the workplace, right? The things that we're listening to and watching. Many of these things could be out of our control, uh, but there is one thing that we can control and that is how we decide to perceive all of that programming, what we decide to hold on to, what meaning we attach to it, basically our mindset. And our mindset influences everything that we do. And it's probably 95% of our success is the way we think. You know, we can learn new skills. We can always, you know, collaborate. We can ask for help. We can figure it out. But our, our mindset determines so much of our success. And what I'd like to, you know, talk about are two, two types of, of mindset when it comes to really understanding the psychology of being successful or the psychology of living a big life. And the first mindset is fixed and the second is a growth mindset. So people who are experiencing a fixed mindset or people who are in a fixed mindset are probably finding themselves a little stuck. They're finding themselves in a rut and they might even be afraid of failure. They might be afraid to take a risk. They might be convinced that they know what they know and there's nothing else to know. And the problem with a fixed mindset is that it opposes growth and it makes it harder for that person to learn new things and experience new things. And basically uh, they close themselves off from po possibility. So a fixed mindset, um, is something that can really hold you back. 
Now, in contrast, a growth mindset will create opportunity, right? Because a, gr a growth mindset is really the first step in living a big or extraordinary life. And in this mindset, failure is just viewed as a learning opportunity, right? There is no, there's no shame in failing. There's no fear in failing, actually, when you have a growth mindset, because um, you embrace failure. And I'll put that in quotes, because what does failure really mean? It just means that uh, something didn't work out as planned, but yet, could you take the time to learn from that and figure out how you'll do it better the next time or do it differently the next time? And so I, I think, you know, when we look at a lot of things in our life, we have to ask ourselves, like, this isn't permanent. This is not something that I should really feel devastated about. Most, most if not all things, you know, besides health, I'll put that over here, but even health can get turned around depending on what we're talking about. But most things are temporary and not permanent. And so someone who has a growth mindset embraces that and says, okay, so this is not happening to me. This is happening for me. And so right now, what am I learning? Now, this takes some, some you know, time to develop. This takes a lot of awareness. This takes a lot of uh, purposeful action and thought. Yet we can all really develop this habit around a growth mindset. And yeah, I say habit because honestly, like any other habit that you could set your mind to, growth is a habit because, you know, with, with thinking of growth, you attract more growth opportunities. And so it really, it gets rooted in your way of thinking. So this is really a habit you can develop. Just like I, I think, you know, negative thinking is a habit. And so when we get ourselves really programmed to think in terms of growth, we're thinking in terms of possibility. And so, as I said a minute ago, failure just sort of looks and feels different. You know, we take it on the chin a little more. And while, look, most people could agree they want to win or they want to succeed, we just have to be okay when failure shows up because it's it's an opportunity for us to do better. And so we not only can look at what it taught us, but we could look at what do we need to to develop in terms of strategy, skill, um, you know, people. What what has to change so that next time we hit the mark? So if you can move and switch from a fix to a growth mindset you're going to see amazing things happen in your life and you will encourage your growth and foster success. Um, and that one little switch could be the thing, could be the, the catalyst that changes everything for you. Because individuals with a growth mindset are less likely to place limits on their lives and they're more likely to reach for their potential. So how do you know if you are in a fixed or a growth mindset? Well, if you're thinking that anything is possible and I just have to figure it out, you're probably in a growth mindset. If you're thinking that, uh, gee, I really can't see my way through this, you're in a fixed mindset. If you're telling yourself that you really um, don't need to learn new things, you're in a fixed mindset. If you're telling yourself that um, there is always something new to learn, that there's always things that I can do differently. If you're someone who says, it's not if I can be successful, it's how I will be successful, then you have a growth mindset. And so again, your mindset can affect your purpose. So when you feel your purpose and you want to really get into experiencing it at its fullness, and you want to achieve big things in life, whatever you define as big, then you're thinking in terms of growth. And so I, I wanted to leave you with some of these tools today, the focus question, understanding the difference between a fixed and a growth mindset, because I believe that most people would say they want to live a big life. I believe that most people will tell you they want more. They want to achieve more. They want to experience more. And, and that could be in so many ways, right? Yet a lot of people don't know how and they don't know what to do first. So I trust that a few of these thoughts really resonated with you today. 
and that you can put some of this into action because you deserve it. You deserve to have a big life and you deserve to achieve great things. And I am happy to be on this journey with you. And um, I really encourage you to think about some things we talked about, maybe journal around it so you can get clarity, so you can develop your vision around it and and make some choices, make some decisions about what you want your life to be and how you want to experience it. So today was, cancel that. Give me a minute. I love editing. Give me a minute to tell, give you my thoughts. <laughs> Okay, here we go. So again, I do believe we all look for more. We look for more ways to be pro productive. We look for more ways to connect, to experience great things, to be successful, to achieve. And so if you want more, I think that it is about cutting through the mental clutter, getting clearer about it, dropping into your heart a little bit and ask yourself, you know, just this one simple question, what do I really, really want? So thanks for being with me today, and I will look forward to seeing you again soon. And um, one of the things I referenced today was the One Thing book by Gary Keller. That might be something that you want to grab. There's a lot of really powerful, um, easy to understand concepts in here about achieving a big life. So I can definitely encourage and recommend that. All right. So I will see you soon. Thanks again for joining me. Bye-bye.